guys, this is just a quick video on how to build the jar for Juicer Tools. Um, just a quick overview, so Juicer is the pipeline for making the high c file as well as finding loops and contact domains in 3D Genomics datasets. Uh, the initial part of the Juicer repository is under github.com slash aidenlab slash juicer. Uh, but the Juicer Tools portion, which is what runs hiccups and error ahead for contact domain analysis or for finding loops, uh, that is actually run out of the Juicebox repository because all this code is in Java. So I'm going to jump for a second here to Juicebox. And uh, so this repository has instructions uh, in the readme for how to set it up in IntelliJ. All the Java code is, uh, is run through that. Uh, that can be downloaded for free. Uh, so the community version of IntelliJ is available online. And once you've downloaded it, so I've already gone ahead and downloaded it. Let me go ahead and launch it right here. Uh, but we have a detailed set of instructions here regarding how to check out the repository and set it up so that it will then build the repository. And this is for both Juicer Tools, which is basically running analysis on the HiC files, as well as Juicebox, which is the visualization of the HiC file. So let me click this. So I have a few different repositories open here. Let me go ahead and open the Juicebox repository, which is also where the Juicer Tools is. And it'll go ahead and load that project. The first time that you'll set this up, just follow the instructions here. And it'll have uh, basically check out from version control. So it'll pull the code from GitHub and, and all that stuff. Uh, but anyhow, so I've gone ahead and and uh, and uh, checked out that code. Uh, presumably, there will be changes or updates one can make to this. That that's what you're that's what you want to do if you're building a new jar. Sometimes, if you may need to recompile it for a specific system, especially if there's aspects to JCUDA for hiccups, uh, that may be another scenario where you're building a jar locally. Uh, but anyhow, so in this particular case, let's say we make some changes to the code and we want to build a new jar that encapsulates those differences. What we can go ahead is make those changes and then make sure that we compile. So that's the button up here. It will compile the code, make sure there are no errors. So this has built without errors. Then we can go ahead and go to the folder here, the folder that sort of contains all this code. And I'm going to right click this and then go to Reveal in Finder. On Windows, this will be something like Open in Explorer or Reveal in Explorer, but something similar. So once we reveal this in Finder, it'll open up that folder. This is the Juicebox folder. These are all the files inside here. Uh, the source folder contains all the source code, which is, which is down here in this directory. But we're going to go to this uh, parent directory, the Juicebox folder. And in this folder uh, are essentially the set of configuration files for building the code. Now, uh, the way to actually build it if we go ahead and open up terminal, I can click CD and then drag this folder here. So we're basically going to the juice box folder. If I type in ls, we can print out. It has here the uh, the files like the build XML file as well as the juice box properties file. If I can find it, um, the juice box properties file which have configurations uh, for the local system. So for example, if you're doing this on a brand new system you will want to edit, for example, the JDK path file, which is already set for my computer. Uh, don't You don't need to worry about the key store and the store path. This is only when building a signed jar that we're publishing on, on the, the, wiki, the wiki page for our juicer. Uh, so once you've set this location to match your local Java path, uh, that, that's really the only change you'll need to make. Um, there are also changes that you can make to the build XML if you're adding in new jars or different jars. So those can be updated as need be, but most likely this will you won't need to worry about editing this. Okay, so once that's once those build configuration files are done and you've saved the code via IntelliJ, uh, all that really needs to be done is to run ant. So this is Apache ant. This is installed on most computers, but if you need to install it, um, you can install Apache ant and, and follow instructions to install it for your computer. So let's go back here for a second. So we're back in the Juicebox folder. I simply run ant, and it is now going to compile all of that code. And it'll usually take a few seconds. Uh, but this is essentially creating the jar files. Uh, and it'll actually make both the jar file for Juicebox and for Juicer tools. So it, because they are both from the same repository, it'll go and build them. OK, so now if we go back to this folder here, we go to the out folder under artifacts. There are two folders now created. One is called Juicebox jar, the other is Juicer tools jar, and these are the respective jars. Um, 
if we want to rerun it, we would simply delete this jar. Oh, sorry, delete that folder, and then we can rerun ant, and it'll remake the folder with the appropriate jar files. Uh, so that's essentially all there is to it. There are additional instructions uh, on the GitHub repository if you want to sign a jar, uh, but that's usually only we only do that for the jars that we are publishing to the wiki page. Uh, so in most cases, you don't need to worry about that and just use these jars. If, for example, we want to launch a repository here, we can run this code by running java-jar. Let me get this bigger. java-jar juicer tools jar, and this has the various command line tools that are available. Uh, but yeah, so that's basically it for building a new jar from source code for juicer tools and for juicebox.